in Affinity 3, say you want to save all these colours, the reds, the greens, the blues, to your swatches panel here. Well, you can. You can save them as a palette. And the way to do that is to actually display the swatches panel, which you can find in Window, and just down to General and Swatches, as long as you've got that. Go to the right side menu, and there's just a little drop down there, so click that, and then down to Create Palette from Document. And you can see as application palette. That will save it so you can use it in future. So if you close the application and come back to it a couple of weeks later, you'll still find that palette there for use. You've also got this one as a document palette, so it will be saved for this document, and also as system palette. Now I've done that one, but it saves it so you can use it in other applications as well. So that's another option. So let's just select it as application palette and it will generate this. And you can see it gives it a name, which is the name of the document, which is very useful. So you know it's Adobe stock, etc. And you'll notice it's got a load of colors there. Now, I don't think that's all the colors available in this image. There's a certain limit. So it goes up to about 68. You can see there if I hover over there. However, say you want to select a particular part of it. So you can go over here and I'm just going to use the rectangular marquee tool and click and drag. So I'm just going over the sweater. I want the colors of that sweater. Now, I can't just run this again. What I need to do is go to edit and I can just go down to copy merged and then file and then new from clipboard. So new from clipboard and it will just create this document. You can do exactly the same then. Just go here to the swatches panel, go to this side menu here again, and then down to create palette from document. And I'm just going to again go with application palette. So select that. And now it will create a set of colors based on these. And it's probably now a lot closer to all of the colors. It's still maybe not every single color. And you could probably isolate it even more down to a couple of sections. However, you'll notice also again, it's 68. So it's created only 68 entries. And let's see if the first one here is one. Yes, so it must be 68. So what can you do also? You can rename this. Of course, you might probably don't want it to be palette two. You can always go up here and again, go down here and you've got an option, rename palette. You can also duplicate the palette. And also, if you don't want it, you can always delete it. And then of course, run it again. You can now see I've just created some shapes with the colors from this. Now, not all of the colors, of course, but you can see it sort of matches the document that I've actually got. There is also an option here in the right side menu, create palette from an image. So you can select that and then select an image and then it will create a palette from that. I've selected a file. So select image brings up obviously a picture of London here. And you can see you get a range of colors here. Well, what I can do here, I can go to a number of colors and I can push it up to, let's go for 181. And then I can click preview. And you can see then it shows you, obviously, all the colors that it's obtained from this image. And again, location, you've got option here for application, system, document, and current selected palette. So it can save it to the one you've currently got or create another application one or system, etc. So let's just go for application and then click create. And then you've got all these colors you can see now from that different document than the one you currently got open. In this case, you'll notice that it actually creates more than of course the 68 that it does by default in the previous way. If you've got any questions or thoughts about this, please let me know in the comments below. Bye.